Through it all, Rome would grow into the most powerful and technologically advanced civilization the world had ever seen. Today, Rome is a 21st century city where the ancient and modern collide. Anyone who's visited the city of Rome is immediately struck by this immense mixture of, of time periods spanning from uh, prehistory all the way up through the modern age. And the wonderful thing about Rome is that you're living in the midst of the history of one of the greatest civilizations that's ever been a part of humanity's history. Roman legend says the city was founded in 753 BC by Romulus and Remus, two brothers who were abandoned as infants and raised by a she-wolf. The two brothers set out to build their own city on the banks of the Tiber River. But a disagreement over who would rule it ended in murder. Remus was killed at the hands of Romulus, for whom the city of Rome is named. It would not be the last time bloodshed produced a new Roman ruler. Civil war actually is one of the very defining features of the growth of the Roman state. The story, the tradition of Romulus and Remus is one that reverberates and echoes throughout Roman history. Initially, Rome was one of countless small kingdoms jockeying for power in central Italy. But unlike many of its neighbors, who were suspicious of outsiders, Rome was a safe haven for ambitious outcasts. Romulus, he said, given the fact that we don't have any population, I'll create an asylum. I will create a sort of a, a free zone for anybody. Runaway slaves, brigands, pirates, whoever. Come and be part of this great idea, which is Rome. That's a very unique attitude. And said from the very beginning, it seemed that the Romans were very open. This openness encouraged a free exchange of ideas, among them were engineering theories imported from other cultures. By borrowing the technology of neighbors like the Etruscans, Rome expanded into a regional power. The Romans had an extraordinary ability to take from a technological past uh, and adapt it to their own purposes uh, and to refine it and to improve upon it they were uh, able to take from these Etruscans the technology of road building, of moving water systems through tunnels, um, of uh, building large extraordinary walls, uh, and produce something which was based on Etruscan technology. The city's first major engineering achievement was the Cloaca Maxima an extensive sewer system which still functions today 2,500 years after it was constructed. The Cloaca Maxima flushed runoff from Rome's city streets into the Tiber River. Engineers also used the sewer's underground pipeline to drain the marshland between Rome's hilltop villages. There they built the Forum, ancient Rome's downtown district. The construction of the Cloaca Massima is the key event in transforming Rome from a, a series of tribes living on disparate hills around a swampy marsh into kind of centralized, unified culture. The uh, new Roman form that resulted from the draining of the Cloaca Massima really allowed that culture to consolidate in one central place. While Rome's culture was consolidating, the influence the city had over its neighbors began to grow. By the 4th century BC, Rome controlled most of central Italy, and its engineers were called on to develop a transportation infrastructure that would connect the expanding empire. In antiquity, there were basically two modes of transportation. There was transportation through the countryside, uh, either on horseback, but probably walking um, or in carts, or that there was travel by ship. The roads, as we understand them today, it basically didn't exist uh, before the Roman Empire. That all changed in 312 BC, when the Via Appia was built. 
Rome's first national highway stretched 132 miles from the capital to its southern province of Campania. To plot the straightest and fastest route down the coast, Roman engineers used a specialized surveying instrument. The Romans relied on the tool called a groma, which was a, a vertical pole that stood in the ground with a cross on the top. And you could sight along this cross to line up two points in a straight line. The big difference with Roman roads and modern roads is that the Romans couldn't survey a corner. So they were all dead straight, and then they would turn a sharp angle and then go dead straight in another direction. The challenge, of course, with building a dead straight road in any direction is that you come to hills and valleys and you have to cross them. So if they had to, then they would cut through the mountains in order to take the road straight through. Once the ideal path was cleared, a broad trench was dug and filled in with sand and boulders to form a solid foundation. Next went a layer of gravel compacted with clay or mortar. The top surface was a layer of thick paving stones angled to allow the water to drain off to the side. The roads were incredibly intimidating. You could look at a road and say, I wonder how long it takes to get a couple of legions, 10,000 guys down this road, you know, right into my backyard. I think I'll think twice about starting any nonsense with Rome. By the time of Julius Caesar's assassination in 44 BC, Rome controlled most of Western Europe and North Africa. It had defeated Carthage a century earlier, making it the Mediterranean world's lone superpower. Caesar's eventual successor was his great nephew Octavian, who was renamed Augustus and crowned Rome's first imperator or emperor. Under Augustus, the Roman road network expanded to reach the farthest corners of the empire. And with the highways paved, it was time to build new destinations. Under Augustus, we can see popping up everywhere Roman-style cities equipped with a forum, with a theater, with an amphitheater, with a basilica, and all of the other markers of, of what made a Roman city. To the recently conquered natives of the provinces, the new cities were a powerful endorsement of the Roman way of life. People would flock to the new cities, these urban centers, which were symbols of civilization, a higher standard of living, incredible jobs. That's where the money resided, and people would go, as today, will go where the jobs are. Uh, and, and ultimately, uh, the, the, the people in these conquered nations would, would really embrace these Roman ideas. The Roman city itself was the greatest uh, image-creating device, I believe, that the Romans had. And those cities survive today, London, Bonn, Paris are all testaments to Rome's uh, expansion of its culture through its cities. Rome's engineers had a secret weapon that enabled them to build bigger, stronger, and faster than anyone else. Waterproof concrete mixed with a volcanic sand called Pazzolana. Early concretes were just a simple lime-mortar mix, which, although they would set, weren't very strong, and indeed the particles in the uh, early concrete could easily break apart. But in Roman concrete, the pozzolan sand reacted with the lime, and it makes a concrete quite like a modern concrete, much, much stronger. They realized pretty early on that by using this substance that they could build literally underwater uh, an extraordinary invention uh, which would allow them then to create enormous piers literally within the water itself revolutionizing travel that is bridges could be built that would be permanent bridges rather than wooden bridges during the age of Augustus this concrete solidified Rome's chokehold on Western Europe allowing Roman builders to dominate the landscape with massive man-made monoliths. One in particular would revolutionize daily life in Rome for centuries to come. 